Well, this is a follow-up to <clears throat> a do-it-yourself tone arm video I made about three or four years ago. Um, I originally started out with a main bearing from a uh, hard drive, and it just didn't work out that well. There wasn't a really great way to attach the pivot here to the main bearing using that and I want something that was you know um, mechanically sound so after doing some research I kinda settled on a combination of a Schick tone arm and an SME the Schick being the main pivot and the the um, clevis that pivots here and then the Schick I'm sorry the SME that I borrowed uh, the design elements is the the bias uh, weight mechanism so this is just a standard head shell no big deal I'm using a uh, Shure M91 cartridge the wires are just purchased off the internet on eBay easily this is a carbon arrow shaft I had to come up with a way to, to nicely um, couple the shaft to the head shell. What I did was um, just took a piece of brass tubing and slid it over, it was kind of a telescopic tubing, slid it over and just glued it together. That's um, really worked really well. This is just some heat shrink tubing to kind of make it look nice and cover up the, the uh, joint from the head shell to the arrow. This here is just a, a rest that I just came up with. Had a piece of wood that I carved out and looks pretty nice. Had to cover up some open holes here that were used for the original Gerard Lab 80 arm rest. So um, I happen to work for a place that has um, some great machinists available and they machine this base for me. This is out of stainless for some reason. I decided to use stainless here. Should have just used aluminum throughout. This top part is aluminum, much more easy to machine. That slides down into the socket in this base part, and it's just resting on a couple ball bearings that I got off McMaster Car. They're high precision, nothing outrageous, but just um, you know, nice precise um, ball bearings. These here for the vertical pivot is what I used in the previous version. The counterbalance is from another Gerard turntable, like a, I don't remember the model number, but just kind of looks nice. And the brass piece here is just a piece of brass rod that I bent and then just uh, actually put it in a lathe first and just put some grooves in there. And you can't probably see it, but there's a really thin piece of nylon string that runs over to another brass rod that I coiled up and bent properly and attached it to one of the um, screws that's used for holding the turntable down during shipping. It's kind of a convenient spot for it. And then over here on the other side there's a little small weight and um, I set this tone arm up using the Hi-Fi News uh, record and it tracks up to about the last torture track and it, it really <laughs> turned out well. I'm surprised at how well this thing turned out. The 9-inch design was, um, I settled on this after originally doing a 16-inch tone arm length, which I had to, this uh, plinth was originally a lot wider, and that 16-inch tone arm pivot sat out here somewhere. But I looked into some research done by some, uh, a thesis work by, I um, forget the guy's name now, but um, he decided that the 9-inch tone arm was a better design because of moving mass, it was a lot lower and it didn't really justify the um, tracking distortion increase you, or improvement you got by a 16-inch tone arm. So that just sat on this uh, original base pretty well and so hey, it turned out good. The anti-skate balance can be adjusted by just moving this, this little uh, filament to one of these other grooves. It just so happens I think I got it on the farthest back groove right now. And you need a test record to, in order to set that right. But uh, here I'll just put it on and take a listen.
love.